I am so thrilled today to be able to chat with Amy Wimpy Knight, who is president of CHA and a dear friend and colleague who is passionate about um, helping uh, our country with firearm violence and trying to protect our kids. So I'd like to turn it over to you, Amy, to introduce yourself and thank you for chatting with me today. Well, thank you, Dr. Arnold. It is wonderful to be here with you. I'm Amy Knight. I'm the president of the Children's Hospital Association and delighted to be here. Thank you. So, you know, in your role, um, you know, I know that you have done so much work in this area. And now, to, as of, you know, the last couple of years, um, we know that uh, firearm violence is actually the number one cause of death in kids, which is just heartbreaking to me as a pediatrician, as a parent, um, and, you know, just as a member of our society. Um, and so I'm just curious if you could share with us from your experience, what is the current state of uh, firearm violence in our country as it's related to children's health? You know, children are such an important part of everything we do, and we, we do look at how it's impacted children. And the study released by JAMA last week, which is the Journal of the American Medical Association, really tells it all. Um, you know, for the first time in decades, we've seen a rise in the rate of youth mortality. And that is terribly frightening. So we fought disease for many years and um, it has gone down incredibly. And so the first uptick happened and that was really primarily linked um, in 2019 to 2020. And then again, 2020 to 21, we saw an uptick of nearly 20% increase in child mortality, child and youth. So one to 19 years age of age. And more than 50% of that was related to gun violence. Gun violence has many forms, as we know. It could be suicide. It could be homicide. But um, I, I think that really tells it all. Um, you know, the fact that we have several thousand children dying each year from gun violence, um, you know, nearly 35 kids shot every day um, year round. And that that can, again, take all forms. But it is it is something that really draws our attention, much like car safety does, much like pool safety, everything else. You know, from my perspective, as we're seeing this data come out, uh, it's it's a true public health crisis, right? I mean, I think about my entire career as a pediatrician, and you know, you hear about what are the top causes of mortality. What's what's you know, what are our kids at risk of? And you know, when I was in a in my training years, it was traditionally more the you know infectious diseases and motor vehicle accidents. And now that we actually see something that's as preventable. Um, I think as, you know, firearm violence, it just, it breaks my heart and it's scary to me as a parent. So I'm just curious, what are your perspective or your thoughts on it being, you know, a, you know, starting for our, our country to start embracing this as a true public health crisis, not just a, you know, a crisis in general? I think you're absolutely right. And I think it's important for us to pay attention. And again, if we look at history, we can see when we face those challenges and those issues, whether it be motor vehicle accidents, um, even bike safety. When I was a child, we didn't wear bike helmets. <laughs> you know, that was like something that was just not around, and we wouldn't think about um, sending our children out into you know a city or elsewhere potentially without a bike helmet. So we need to look at it like that. So we do have a crisis on our hands, and and approaching it from that standpoint. And certainly, um, post pandemic, if you can call us there yet, we probably have more than one um, violence. Gun violence is certainly one, and I think the answer to that is gun safety. And we can talk a lot about that same way we have, you know, an er, increase in overdose and everything. We need to pay attention to what the data is telling us and then develop Im important solutions that have an impact on that, right? Because we can change it. We can. And so that's the thing that is like, so, um, you know, it's, 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 it, that's the part that's empowering, right? We can do better and other countries are doing much better than us. Um, and access to guns is really our number one risk factor for kids, right? So, um, and, and then, like you said, gun safety, keeping them locked and the ammunition stored separately um, is so important to helping prevent it from getting into our, our kids' hands. Um, I, I guess, as I think about this public health crisis in, in your role, you're doing so much from the Children's Hospital Association. Um, can you tell me about some of the advocacy work that you all are doing at CHA? Sure. Um, you know, gun or gun safety is important. It's important to every children's hospital in this country. I think it's um, important to recognize that um, as, as an association, we represent over 200 children's hospitals. They come from state that have very various feelings about about gun laws in general, but gun safety is something we can all rally around. 
And so when we look specifically at legislative um, activity that's happened in the past year, um, we work closely with the American Academy of Pediatrics and they have a gun violence prevention research initiative that they um, write a letter on every year. And of course, we're going to sign on to that because it is really around gun safety. It's just what you said, keeping the ammunition and the firearms separate from our children. Um, we, and it looks at research in particular and how we study that and understand the impact of it. Certainly in 2022, um, there was a bipartisan um, act, the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act, which was something we emphatically signed on to, which provided some provisions um, for school safety and youth mental health, two things that are obviously top and important to child advocates as well. And then in 2021, we also endorsed the Children's Suicide Prevention and Lethal Means um, Safety Act, which would invest in educating healthcare providers who we're talking about and parents in better ways of, of preventing um, death by firearms and death by suicide. Oh my goodness. It's so important. Um, and you know, it's, it's, you know, you think about kids, right. And suicide, you bring up suicide, you bring up, um, school safety. Um, you know, I think as a healthcare clinician, we're seeing so many more, uh, kids in the hospital right now who are at risk or have attempted suicide. And those are the, the kids that have survived it. Um, you know, that really makes me worried uh, as a healthcare provider, how we're seeing that population grow. I, I believe it's about a third of our kids um, that die from gun violence are typically um, from suicide. And um, I, I guess, you know, when we think about the different causes, right, homicide, suicide, you know, um, accidental uh, shootings with kids just having access to them, um, and then last but not least, the, the, the mass school shootings that are on the rise. Um, why is it so important in your perspective for children's hospitals and clinicians like myself to get behind uh, gun violence prevention? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, gun safety is probably, you know, the top of the list. And when we think about um, who impacts um, that more than anything, obviously, children's hospitals play a role in that. But importantly, the physicians and the caregivers, the nurses that they see every day. So we have a responsibility, as you started, really, to society and to ourselves and the, and the professionals that we serve to make sure that every um, clinician has the opportunity and the skills to ask about this. And importantly, every parent, you know, as you mentioned earlier, when we think about, um, you know, car safety and motor vehicles and things of that nature, it, it probably happens without a doubt when someone's handing their child off to um to have someone else drive their child, they're thinking about what car are they driving? Do they have the booster seat? You know, all of that stuff. We should be thinking that same way when we think about gun safety because guns are part of our society and making sure that people are being thoughtful about, um, about that as well. Yeah, you know, I know today only about a third of gun, over, gun owners can, can attest to the fact that they keep, um, they, they have gun safety provisions in their home with children. So we certainly have an opportunity to increase. And most of that is probably just by opportunity or education. And so yeah. making sure that we are creating that environment that that welcomes that education so that, that all children are safe from guns. Yeah, no, I think you just hit the nail on the head. Like we, like, you know, myself as a pediatrician, you know, we need to be asking our patients and our families, like what, what is their, you know, do they have a gun in the home? How do they store it? And um, helping them to understand how best to store it so that it's safer uh, for their kids. Um, yeah, it's um, it's so important. And we, each one of us can make a difference, um, you know, even if it's just by asking the question. Yeah, I mean, sometimes asking the question is the single most important thing because it causes us to think we've all been asked questions before that we may, it may not have occurred to us and we may not have even thought about it, whether it's a new parent um, or the parent of a young child that thinks it might not even be possible, but we've all seen those truly tragic stories. And I know, as you mentioned, you know, in, in your hospital and hospitals across this country, one of the most traumatic things for families, for physicians, and for all caregivers caring for children that have been either injured or in worse situation killed um, by gun, by accident, is is truly a traumatic event for everyone involved. And we'd love to to not have that happen anymore. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's just... I think it's hard as a as a physician when you see people kids die for things that you can't prevent. That's heartbreaking enough. And then when you see kids die from something that is preventable, um, it just it just feels so so frustrating. Um, I think for us. 
And, you know, along the advocacy lines, because I think, you know, this is, you know, more than ever, we're talking about this, which is great. And we're getting it out there. And we're hopefully continuing to raise awareness, um, you know, for for parents out there who want to do more to help um, advocate and keep, you know, their kids safe or, you know, kids in our, in, in, you know, in our community safe. What are some things that maybe parents can do or clinicians? I, you know, I think um, we all have responsibility with this again, and I think it's feeling safe to have that conversation, whatever that looks like. Certainly, we are all talking to our children, our children's friends and other parents about drug and alcohol abuse, about tobacco use. Um, you know, gun safety should fit right in there again with pool safety, bike helmet safety. It's something that we know we can prevent and kind of normalizing that conversation is something we do. The more we don't talk about it, the more abnormal it is. You know, it, we can probably look just even in the past couple of years. Um, as we've helped our children navigate the pandemic and navigate coming out of the pandemic and returning to school. Certainly mental health has been something we're talking a lot more about. It's okay to feel sad. It's okay to ask for help, things of that nature. So just making it as casual as that. Again, it's not an accusatory statement. It should be part of a normal con conversation that we all want to have. And, and certainly pediatricians have led the way in this in many ways. I remember um, when my own children were small, um, nearly 20 years ago now, but they, you know, the form you fill out asks if we had firearms in the house, which is a yeah. totally legitimate, normal question. And then there's a follow-on conversation, I'm sure, that they have that asks um, what you're going to do about it. So I think that's that's such a pivotal role, just the same way that um, schools are and, and talking about it openly there as well. So I think we've certainly seen incidences in recent years where um, we all would have benefited from having those conversations. Okay, so I'm going to put on my parent hat for a minute, not my pediatrician hat. Like, you know, when I, now I have young kids, right? So my, I have a preteen and a teen and it's, it's some, ironically, I'm a pediatrician. I, I did used to ask when I would see outpatients. Now I'm in neonatology. So it's a little bit of a different environment in terms of care. But when I was taking care of kids of all ages, I asked them about a gun in the home. And that was just part of what we did. And now all of, you know, our series of questions, just like you said, but, but it's really hard as a, parent to ask another parent when your kids are going over for a play date or something, you know, do you have a gun in the home or a firearm? And, you know, how is, if so, how is it stored? And I think for some reason, those conversations are hard. And I think, again, just wanted to say thank you for bringing this to the forefront, because the more we talk about it, the easier it gets. Absolutely. And, you know, I think it's very similar, um, putting on my parent hat as a um, parent of a child with a food allergy. It's a conversation you learn how to have when you're taking someone over for a play day, you have to ask and you have to let them know. And, um, you know, I think it's a very normal conversation once you've had it once. It's just like everything else. And and I think that, um, you know, responsible gun owners are going to respond very um, emphatically as to how they're doing it. So it should make us all feel um, a little safer and sending yeah. our, our children around and it's it's part of their world and it's part of ours and teaching our children at the same time to navigate those situations and and to 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 stand up for themselves and others should a situation become unsafe because certainly prevention is a responsibility of all of us. Yeah, we just need to normalize the the prevention and the safety conversation. Absolutely. And it takes time, but it shouldn't take too much longer. We need to get to it and get busy and um, make it a part of all that we do. That's great. So, so Amy, I know you. Uh, this important, this issue is really important to you and to Children's Hospital Association. There's a new. I feel like there's a new momentum going forward. Um, you know, within healthcare, uh, making this a true public health crisis, um, not just a political issue. It's really about our lives. It's about safety. And so, um, I'm just curious. You know, why why is this so important to you uh, in your role? You know, if you, if you think about it, I mean, one, obviously, as a parent, um, and two, just seeing the impact um, that it has on so many people when a child is is harmed in any way. And, you know, I think we, we go back to what we were talking about earlier. We are all here to prevent injuries. I mean, that's what we do as parents and as adults. You stop the child from running into the street. You put their bike helmet on. You tell them to look both ways before crossing the street. And so, Really, again, back to our conversation, it's important just to normalize it. Um, certainly, there is going to be political activity around it. But if we get to the core of this, this is about injury prevention and keeping kids safe. Um, and so the better that we can store firearms, the more awareness we have among um, caregivers, whether that's a parent, a friend, a family member. It takes a village, but our village needs to be safe in order for our children really to, um, to grow into adulthood safely. And so this is one. There's a lot of things 
that can take them off track, as we know as parents of teenagers. But but certainly this is one of the things that we can um, focus on and, and really make a difference in as hospitals, as pediatricians and physicians, as clinicians, as friends, and especially as parents. You yeah, know, I've I've recently started having more and more conversations because, um, again, you know, as a parent, my kids are now at that age where they're going over to spend the night at friends' houses, or they're dealing with their own level of, you know, stress and anxiety and even depression. And you know, I know that teens can be impulsive, and so I worry about, you know, making an impulsive decision that they'll regret. And so. I started having these really difficult conversations. I just had a difficult conversation last night that I'm like, wow, I never expected as a parent that this is sort of like something I'd have to do on a daily basis almost. But you have to keep having these conversations, keeping that communication open. Otherwise, you know, our kids are facing all of these challenging situations on their own. And um, you just don't want to miss an opportunity to, to help them. Absolutely. Um, you know, just thinking of, of teens preparing to drive, right? We send them through hours of classes, um, put them behind the wheel, give them tests. You know, I think, um, again, gun safety is very much like that. And there certainly are um, responsible behaviors that go along with gun ownership or gun, gun um, you know, whether, whether you own it personally or whether it's a parent or someone else. So just parents also taking that same care when entrusting a firearm for other purposes with their child as well, just to educate and, and make sure, you know, I think this, um, another point I just thought of is we've really seen in this past year, there's a group called Hospitals United who are really focused on gun safety. And so um, Children's Hospital Association with many of our members, in fact, probably most of them um, ha have signed on to that campaign, which is really about gun safety. I mean, that's, that's what it's about. And that these are hospitals from all 50 states um, you know, regardless of, of um, political leanings, again, focused on injury prevention and safety and, and kids are an important and, you know, in our minds, probably the most important part of, of that focus. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I mean, again, I, I've lived in many different states now in my career. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, different states have different perspectives on, you know, gun access and things of that nature. And it really doesn't matter what your state or what your individual perspective is, if you have a gun or if you want to have a gun or if you don't have a gun, it's all about safety. That's, I mean, that's our job as a community is to keep our kids safe. And um, that's, we can do that regardless of whether or not we are firearm owners or not. We can, and and that can happen. You know, we, we've said advocacy several times throughout this organization and people often think of that as talking to your congressmen are talking to, but sometimes advocacy is talking to your neighbors and your friends um, and really talking to your kids and, and teaching them to advocate for themselves. So I, I, you know, I think this is one of those opportunities we have to really define that broad, broadly and equip all of us to, um, to do, to be more responsible in that area and be, be good citizens and good friends and good colleagues in that. Yeah. Our kids' lives depend on it. They do. They absolutely do. So they depend on a lot of things, but this is one we can we can make change in and we have an opportunity. I think that's what the data tells us, um, both what we've seen in the past two years and just the uptick and in, um, in consideration and concerns and, and certainly education. I think education is our most powerful piece. And, and that's what you're doing here today, really, is starting to talk to to parents. Um, certainly pediatricians are well educated in this. And we certainly have seen some of the data that says they are doing more of that talking all the time. Um, and so I, I think we can continue to broaden our circle. So so another question, Amy, is there, um, you know, certain places that parents can go to, to sort of get, you know, concrete, tangible takeaways uh, for action to help, you know, enhance advocacy or, you know, provide more safety for their own kids? Well, Hospitals United is a campaign and a coalition of more than a thousand children, or more than a thousand hospitals across the country, including many children's hospitals. And the campaign is really geared towards parents and families. And so by going to hospitalsunited.com, um, there's a plethora of resources that will help you and start to have those conversations that may make you more comfortable um, with words and actions to do that. And, you know, I guess we would just really encourage you to practice those conversations, practice it with in a safe place, whether that's with family or friends, um, because it, it is always a little difficult to do something for the first time. But definitely Hospitals United provides a, a great starting point. In addition to resources in your own community, there are certainly um, 
action groups and children's hospitals. And again, your pediatrician, if you're struggling with something, is always a great resource as well. Yeah, I looked on the website too, and it was helpful. I mean, just giving you a, 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 for, a framework for asking these tough questions so that the first time you do it, it's, it, it you know, you got that, you got that guide. You yeah, got yeah that it's just a little bit easier. You try it on for size and you can make changes as you go. Um, Cause certainly once you have it, it all, it gets a little easier every time. That's right. That's right. Thank you.